31,536,000. That is roughly how many seconds I have been adventuring out on my Unity game development journey. I think it is time I share a little about this journey, which may help some newbies out. For those still trying to do the math, 31,536,000 seconds is a year. In that one year, I made countless prototypes, participated in 10 game jams, and made roughly 14 tutorials which all of these used Unity. The level of entry to be able to make video games is mind-blowing in this day and age. Before I go deeper into this, let me tell you a little bit about myself so you have a better understanding of where I am coming from. I wasn't a complete noob when it came to coding or designing in general when I started with Unity. I have a little over 10 years of random experience, such as programming in other languages, 3D modeling for fun and also as part of my career, and lastly, I used to make YouTube tutorials for a program called Alice from Carnegie Mellon University. Fun fact about those early tutorials is that I was actually credited in a lesson plan from the University of Adelaide as support material. The part that makes us fun was I was only 19 when I made those tutorials. Thinking back to when I started doing game development as a hobby, the barriers in place were still pretty high. Unity itself was in its infancy as a consumer product, Unreal still was not easily accessible, and most game engines you could find were difficult to work with in general. Even finding support material or tutorials were hard to come by. Nowadays, a lonely dev can crank out a game in 6 months and gain critical acclaim using pre-made assets and some YouTube tutorials. The main point I'm trying to make is that if you're interested in game development in any capacity, now is a great time to just jump in and try everything you possibly can think of. It is even possible to make entire games without writing a single line of code using Unity's visual scripting or Unreal's blueprint. Speaking of getting started making games, the process is different for everyone, but maybe my methods of starting with Unity will help someone. I may have been praising the low entry of game development a minute ago, but with that there comes the problem of too many options. While trying to decide what game engine I wanted to use, I researched for about a week, going over engines such as Unreal, Godot, Construct, and a few others. Finally I landed on Unity due to the unholy amount of free tutorials, decent enough documentation, and an editor that I just felt comfortable with. In hindsight, I built up this decision as a huge stepping stone. However, in reality, all I had to do was try it out and move on if I didn't like it. That is the funny thing about jumping into this kind of endeavor, is at the end of the day, these engines are just tools for us to work with. Certain tools may be better suited for certain tasks, but the good thing about tools, if it isn't working, just pick up a new one and try that. Now I have my game engine, so what's next? Of course I'm going to create the next Fortnite with microtransactions and become a filthy millionaire, right? Well, no. Naturally, I needed to familiarize myself with the engine and C Sharp. I was tempted to use visual scripting, however, I felt this restricted me in ways I didn't care for. After a few beginner-friendly tutorials such as Brackies and digging through Unity's documentation for countless hours, I was able to make my first little project, which was a Brick Breaker game. Ooh. At this point, I was feeling on top of the world. I made a single-scene Brick Breaker game with buggy hit detection and poor ball-bouncing physics. So of course I wanted to jump headfirst into my long-term project. Being optimistic, I created my brand new game project titled Definitely Not Resident Evil. This was going to be a 2D top-down classic survival horror game. I was able to get a fairly small prototype working that included player movement, gunplay, a basic zombie, and a very rough inventory system, but... Have you ever had one of those moments where you felt like a balloon just minding your own business, then you get popped? Well, I quickly hit that feeling when working on this project because I was incredibly happy with the progress, but due to my lack of understanding and organization at the time, the project became so fractured and broke at any little code change I did, I had to abandon my project. This led to the epiphany that I needed to hone my skills fairly quickly since I really wanted to get back to work on my passion project. So how does one rapidly increase their skills in game development? For me, it was diving headfirst into projects that had strict timelines that forced me to learn what I wanted to do quickly or learn how to pivot quickly and head a new direction. Where does one find such a project with strict timelines? Funny that you ask. Ever hear of game jams? These game creation events used to be pretty rare a decade or more ago, yet currently you can find dozens of ongoing game jams. I stuck with itch.io since they have a decent history of hosting jams and have a great schedule showing all the current and upcoming jams. What does a game jam do in terms of leveling up your game developer skills? Right off the bat there is usually a community for each game jam event. Communities can be great for gaining good reference materials, finding mentors, or even just finding like-minded individuals to bounce ideas and solutions off of each other. Jams are known to be done in strict time limits, sometimes two days, sometimes a week. What this does for a newbie is it helps you get into a mindset of refining your scope. Never heard of scope? 
Well, that just means the vision you have for your game. When given two days to make a playable and enjoyable game, you really need to focus your mindset and limit what you want. When the jam starts, your first instinct might be to create a first-person shooter with 10 mini-bosses, a sweet grappling hook, and 7 endings. If you attempt this, you'll more than likely end up with a pile of spaghetti code that is not appetizing to anyone. If you restrict your scope down to a first-person shooter with a single level that is well laid out, fun gameplay, and an interesting enemy, then you will have a more focused and enjoyable experience. Once you set the groundwork of a project small in scope, it is much easier to expand upon if necessary. This transitions well into the next topic, which is game jams allow you to try new concepts you never thought of before. Given the short timeline and focusing your project scope to simpler gameplay can result in some great new mechanics or at least a familiar mechanic with a fantastic twist to spice it up. This may seem counterintuitive since you might stick with what you already know, but if you get comfortable enough with the basic mechanics games typically offer such as platforming, gunplay, or puzzle solving, you may be able to expand upon these and improve them. You might be pondering examples of what I mean, lucky for you, I have one. I joined a game jam called the Curdle Jam, which was a fairly small jam, which was just for fun and some additional practice. The theme was Worn Thin, which if you're familiar with jams with themes, you know these are open for interpretation. Our little team decided to go with a small platformer game with an annoying narrator that would wear the player thin by his obnoxious dialogue. Due to some additional time constraints, we had to pivot our platformer gameplay to a simpler mechanic which was more of a puzzle game. We still wanted some type of platforming included, so the game quickly turned into a puzzle platformer. We eventually landed on a top-down 2D puzzle platformer where platforms start to disappear after you step off of them. This was alright, but once you understood how to play the game, there wasn't much challenge other than lining up your jumps. That is where we added our twist, making the player play quickly. We didn't do this artificially by adding a timer though. We added it into the gameplay in a fairly clever way. After stepping off a platform, it starts to shrink. The little caveat is that you are able to still traverse the platform while it is shrinking. So we included a few puzzles near the end of the game where you had to quickly jump around the puzzle and double back over your path. This added a lot of tension by making the player move faster while still thinking ahead. What is even the point of talking about this? This little story hopefully shows that even though you think you have a solid game plan at the beginning, there might be problems that arise you have to work around either by changing up the core design of your game, simplifying scope, or by adding a simple twist of how your existing mechanics work. So big whoop, I joined a game jam and came up with a clever solution. Well, the big thing is I participated in 10 separate game jams, all with varying success. Over these 10 projects, I tried creating multiple genres, tested unique mechanics, and gained some great friends along the way. It was important to me to keep learning and growing as a developer, whether it be strengthening programming knowledge, acting as a team leader, and keeping a full team organized, even learning to jump in and fill gaps that were not filled, like additional sound effects or voice acting. I was able to achieve this thanks to joining so many random game jams and communities surrounding the topic. If you are curious to check out any of the games I worked on, the link to my itch.io page will be in the description. I guess it would be a good time to talk about some of my favorite projects that I worked on. Out of Sight was the very first game jam project I worked on, which makes it hold a very special place in my heart. It went surprisingly well working with a team of strangers that lived thousands of miles apart. I worked on the programming while a musician and an artist joined up with me. We stuck with a Tim Burton art style and creepy atmosphere which I personally adored. The gameplay was fairly basic but worked and was solid enough. This was essentially a linear adventure game. My next favorite project was Through the Lens. This was another spooky atmospheric game, but we went with a point and click adventure genre. The main hook of this game had you viewing the world through a camera which would show you the truth of everything. This one is definitely worth the 10 minutes of playtime. So it seems I was still fixated on scary adventure games. But my next project was a total 180. Cerebellum Turmoil was a 2D top-down twin-stick shooter. This game really helped me develop my skills on the coding side of things since I learned how to use Unity's new user input system and make the game work as a WebGL build. We didn't focus too much on a gimmick or unique twist. We wanted to make a very solid twin-stick shooter experience, which I feel we pulled off. Plus the music was banging for this project. There are a few other projects I would love to discuss, but I think this shows how I utilize game jams to try new techniques, genres, level of polish, and just force myself to dig more into the game dev scene. A year is a surprisingly long time, so game jams cannot be the only thing I did during this time, could it? Of course not, don't be foolish. I worked on some side projects for my channel such as showing some of the basics of shader graphs in Unity. For those who don't know what shader graph is, just think of the filters you have seen in Snapchat, which essentially shaders are doing the same thing but in game development environment. 
I also tried my hand at a few small interactive experiences for the purpose of making videos. The main one that actually got finished was recreating the interactive floating head from Super Mario 64. This was overall a super fun project to work on and create, but the effort put into it for a video ended up not really being worth it in the long run. I did learn how to work with 3D models and their skeletons from this project though, so I still learned something from it. I guess the main thing I'm trying to say with all of this video is the past year has been filled with many ups and downs, especially with the pandemic still occurring. But even with that, I was still able to make progress towards my end goal. What is my end goal, you may ask? Good question. I would have to say that I now feel equipped enough to be able to tackle my long-term passion project. We have come full circle since when I initially started and tried my passion project of Resident Evil style game and failed at it. But a full year later, I leveled myself up, gained incredible friends and support. Armed with the knowledge to be able to finally conquer my passion project of making a Resident Evil style game, but it will now be a 3D co-op experience thanks to the work put in the last year. Again, if you're curious about any of the projects I talked about here today, my itch.io page will be linked in the description. And I feel like I talked your ears off, so with that being said, thanks for watching, and as always, take care and stay safe.